Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm delighted to welcome you to the SciFIM Virtual Brand Protection Summit. Today, I will be covering a strategic approach to uh, product uh, protection. So I don't want to, to go too much into the, um, the details, but more into the strategic uh, angle of it. So we'll take a bird eye view of counterfeits and product protection. Uh, what are the most common pitfalls and how to avoid them. So this webinar is a broadcast. So if you have any questions, please uh, ask them in the chat directly and we'll answer them as soon as there is a question break. As you well know, counterfeiting is now 3.3% of world trade. That is colossal. 3.3% of any goods sold is fake. If counterfeiters were a company, it would dwarf Apple, Amazon, and Google by revenue. Think about it. There is a behemoth called counterfeiting, and it is bigger and richer than Apple plus Amazon combined. And it is growing fast too. We always talk how the, the GAFA are, are taking over the world and are more powerful than countries. Well, counterfeiters are bigger than them. How did we get to this point? How is that even possible? And not only that, counterfeits kill 1 million person per year. So if counterfeiting was a disease, it would be more lethal than HIV or malaria. Okay, fortunately, it wouldn't be more lethal than tuberculosis or COVID, but still, there is a Leviathan out there called counterfeiting who is bigger than Apple and who kill more than malaria. How did we get to this point? How is that even possible? I mean, the numbers are stunning. For example, 64% of anti-malarials in Nigeria are counterfeit, of which 68% are sold at the real price in real pharmacies. And under such condition, it is almost impossible to buy real anti-malarials even at the real price uh, in Nigeria. How is that even possible? Are, are really 70% of pharmacists a bloodthirsty murderer who, who, who are complicit of a crime who can kill their clients? Obviously not. So the heart of the question is there. How can counterfeits be bigger than Apple and kill more than malaria? How come there are so many fakes? How did we get there? Well, the answer lies in the distribution networks. In the past 40 years, with globalization, we have seen a, a massive increase in the complexity of the supply and distribution chains. So it's no longer one or two intermediaries that stands between the brand and the final consumer, but an extremely dense and connected web of resellers, wholesalers, uh, until you get to the stores. As long as you don't have counterfeit products, everything is fine. Your products can reach the end customer without problem anywhere in the globe. But if you have counterfeits, things start to be messy. Because the heart of the problem is counterfeits are invisible. So when a store buys from a wholesaler, they have absolutely no way of knowing whether they are buying a counterfeit or not. Counterfeits are totally invisible. So if you take your supply chain and then it only takes one of your reseller to decide to inject counterfeit products into your distribution network, and that's it. As the counterfeits are totally invisible, it will be able to contaminate your entire distribution chain. And in the end, this counterfeiter will not only make huge profit, but he will contaminate all your resellers without them even knowing it. And all your stores will have a percentage of counterfeiters, of counterfeits, whether they like it or not. 
these crimes benefits no one but a single wholesaler. But as the counterfeits are invisible, it contaminates the whole network without any problem, including and especially perfectly honest resellers who had no desire to sell counterfeits. In the end, if only one wholesaler is dishonest, the whole distribution networks is contaminated. And for the end user, it is worse than anything else. When the product reach him, the real ones and the fake ones are at the same price or roughly the same price. And he has no way to tell the difference between the potentially dangerous or even deadly sometimes counterfeit product and the real one. Especially if your brand does not use any uh, counterfeiting technology for the end user, the counterfeit is totally invisible. And in fact, the situation is even worse because if your brand uses an obsolete technology, like a QR code, for example, uh, counterfeiters, co counterfeiters will have no trouble making a counterfeit QR code. And customers will have absolutely no way to differentiate the real from the fake. So it legitimizes the fakes. And actually, the, um, the, internal or, the International Organization for Standardization, the ISO organization, is formal of this point. This is the heart of the problem. Counterfeiters have defeated all the obsolete technology, and that is the heart of the problem. For example, there was a time when holograms, who were invented in, in the 40s, were very effective against counterfeiters. That's why all passports and banknotes have holograms, because there was a time where counterfeiters could not make fake holograms. As a reminder, this is what a computer looked like in 1948. The Manchester Mark I, uh, it was brand new in 1948. It was top notch at the time and it served well. It was the, the top of the line for a long time, but it did its time. The world moved on and so, so happened for holograms as well. Holograms made their time. They were extremely effective once upon a time and counterfeiters were not able to make fakes, but now they have succeeded in counterfeiting them. And it is very easy nowadays to find fake holograms on the internet. Even very sophisticated holograms like Teza Scribos, it is absolutely not a problem to find fakes on the internet. So the holograms, the SMH scratch code, encrypted QR code, GS1 data matrix, all of these technology were very efficient 10 years ago, but they are now completely obsolete and counterfeiters have no issue counterfeiting them. Think about it. When QR codes, 2D barcodes, were invented, this computer was top-notch. <laughs> this is what a computer looked like when they were invented. Back then, it was top of the line, you know? And counterfeiters caught up. For example, the photo you see here, uh, they seized 14,000 fake bottles, fake alcohol bottles. Well, no worries. They all had a fake QR code and a fake hologram. That's not a problem for counterfeiters anymore. We saw firsthand a terrible example of that from a company that is now our client. Of course, I, I will not disclose the name, but they initially protected their product with a scratch code like this one, exactly this one. And the result was terrible. This is their one year sale in the US of genuine product. And they saw they had fakes. So they put a scratch code on it. A week later, counterfeiters had made fake scratch code. And this is the sale of their counterfeiters in the US over the same period. Because since the anti-counterfeit technology have been defeated, it completely legitimized the counterfeit products. Uh, not only their fake product was slightly cheaper, but the scratch code would say that it's genuine too. So it, it would be very legitimate. And uh, in a very short time, the fake product have replaced the real product on its own territory. 
So this is my warning. Obsolete technologies have become dangerous now. If there is one thing I would like you to remember today is that obsolete technologies are dangerous. Don't rely on technologies from the 80s because counterfeiters have long defeated them. QR codes, scratch codes, holograms, all these technologies are from 30 years ago and counterfeiters have no problem counterfeiting them now. So if there is one thing you should remember from my presentation is that these technologies have now become very dangerous and it is imperative not to use them. Now, some company have tried to give them a, a second life. Uh, I think we have people in the waiting room, Charles, if you want to let them in. Um, so some companies have tried to give them a second life to the QR code with blockchain. Uh, you hear a lot about those awesome blockchain encrypted QR code with a unique code linked to the blockchain. Uh, there is unfortunately a notion of company out there selling this. Let's talk about blockchain. Um, there is a lot to say about blockchain. Concretely, blockchain is a relatively new technology from 2008 that allow the secure communication and the secure storage of information. So concretely, if you use a blockchain, you can communicate and store data in a secure way. Basically, the data stored cannot be modified or it cannot be deleted. It's a good replacement for an SQL database, for example. So if you want to use blockchain to secure uh, digital transactions, uh, that's the right tool for, for the job. The problem is, Blockchain doesn't make an obsolete technology more secure at all because it is a communication and storage protocol. It is not an anti-counterfeiting technology. Let me give you an example. Traditionally, a QR code would be linked to an SQL database, exactly the way that your old 80s computer was usually connected to the internet using a 56K uh, dial-in modem. Actually, the analogy is very accurate because the QR code is the actual physical anti conflict technology and the SQL database is the storage uh, medium. So you have these two pieces of equipment that used to be top-notch 30 years ago and now you try to use them to go to Netflix. And for some reason, it doesn't work. So you have people who try to give their computer a second spin by saying, oh, let's replace the SQL database with blockchain. And it's just as if you, you replace your old modem with the latest 5G. It doesn't solve your problem at all. No, you cannot stream on Netflix with a computer from the 80s, even if you plug it to the latest 5G network. Because your problem isn't the speed of the network, it's that you are using an outdated technology. And that's exactly the same for QR code plugged to the blockchain. The blockchain is a great communication and storage protocol, but it doesn't make a, an obsolete QR code more secure at all. You can just make a fake QR code and the blockchain is none the wiser. So uh, blockchain doesn't make QR code more secure for the same reason that obsolete computers from the 80s will never be able to run Netflix. The QR code is an obsolete technology. It has served its time. It used to be secure enough, but it is time to let it die now. And blockchain doesn't make an obsolete technology better. So even blockchain encrypted QR code, whatever buzzwords you want, are actually very dangerous. And we receive lots of requests from customers who use them and get counterfeited big times, and then they come to us. So I won't dive into the detail of our technology. This will be later uh, in the webinar, but that's exactly why when we designed Cyframe from the ground up, we were fully aware that QR codes and holograms were obsolete. So from the start, we focused on cutting edge technology like deep learning, uh, ResNet is only five years old to defeat counterfeiters because we knew from the start that you cannot defeat counterfeiters with obsolete technology.
So we decided to bring the latest advances in artificial intelligence to the world of counterfeit detection. Again, I will not go into the detail of how our technology work. This, is, uh, this will be covered in the, later in the webinar. But from a strategic point of view, because that's what I focus on here, the idea is if you can enable anyone with a smartphone to detect fake products, then counterfeit lose their superpower. They lose their invisibility. Like from the start, the biggest problem with counterfeit is that since they're invisible, they can contaminate your entire distribution chain. It's just like COVID. Why is this disease so nasty? Because a lot of people have COVID and they spread COVID and actually they have no symptoms. They're not even aware themselves that they have COVID. It's because it is invisible that it is so dangerous. And that's exactly the same with counterfeits as we explain later. So as soon as you make counterfeits from invisible to visible, everything is much easier. Your distribution network can defend itself against counterfeiting. Even if several wholesaler buy counterfeit products on purpose, all of the others, they can protect themselves against it. And your distribution network can finally defend itself and prevent contamination. Your resellers will, you, will refuse the fakes, your store and your end users too, because now they can see them. They finally have a proof. If it is fake, okay, legally I am not allowed to buy it. And anyway, I will endanger my reputation and my customer. So, all right, as a wholesaler, I will not buy it. And as soon as the counterfeits are no longer invisible, as soon as they become visible, then your network will self-react and isolate the counterfeiters. As a conclusion, if there are three things that I want you to remember from my presentation today, is that counterfeits are now bigger than Apple and they kill more than malaria. And that's because legacy technology like QR codes or scratch code offer no protection against modern counterfeiters. These technologies are obsolete and they are very dangerous. Do not use them. And the entire purpose of SciFIM is to leverage artificial intelligence to make counterfeits visible as to not contaminate your distribution network. Uh, so that's it for my talk today. Uh, Charles, are there any questions? Um, let me see in the chat. A uh, question here. Some company use blockchain to store an encrypted number and they link to a QR code. Is that secure? So like I explained, it's not the problem of the blockchain. The blockchain itself is very secure, but the blockchain is just a communication protocol. It is not an anti-counterfeit technology and it does not make your QR code any more secure at all. Uh, I see another question. Uh, every time you have a question, please ask it in, in the chat directly. Uh, how does your artificial intelligence work? So this, don't worry, uh, we, will, um, we will cover it uh, later in the webinar. So uh, if there is no more questions, uh, that's it for my presentation today.